Great, excellent. Okay, fantastic. So um, this is Google Classroom, and I'm assuming that if you're in this room, you probably have an interest in Google Classroom and maybe using it now or just want to know a little bit more about it. So Google Classroom is like a, a command center. <laughs> Sorry for the guy mowing his lawn next door. Um, for, uh, for distributing documents to students. And uh, you can see each one of these little boxes here represents a classroom space. Uh, and if I go into one of these classroom spaces here, you've got various aspects. You're seeing the teacher view of this at the moment. Um, so uh, I'm seeing, I can tell I'm in the teacher view because I've got this tab here that says grades. Um, but I've got a stream where students can sort of discuss things and you can see I've got sort of, this is just a dummy classroom with made up students. But uh, you've got the stream page there where students can discuss work. You've got a classwork page where uh, all this, uh, all the work can go onto that page. And of course, the people tab where teachers and students are kept. And then there's a grade book for any work that students do that will automatically go into the grade book like so. And so that's just a quick uh, overview of what Classroom looks like. But we're here to talk about originality reports. So I'm just going to make one for you first of all, I'll show you how it works, and then we can talk about uh, sort of what's going on behind the scenes. So as a teacher, I'd come in here and hit the Create button. And I can create a number of pieces of work for students. And the thing I want to create right now is an assignment. So I'll click on Assignment. And I'll give this, and I'll call this a um, persuasive writing task. Uh, actually, now I'll call it a where do we live? Where do we live task? OK. And I could give my students some instructions. And the instructions in this case would be to write a piece of work describing where you live and why you like it. All right. Now I can do two things. I can either click on this add button here and I can add something, either a Google Drive document, a link, a file or a YouTube video, or I can simply not add anything at all and ask the student to create a piece of work and attach it. And that's what I'll do in this particular instance. Over on the side here, I can determine which class I'm, I'm sending this work to, uh, which students, if any, so I can differentiate the work. If, it, if I wanted to just give it to one particular student, I could do that. Uh, but let's actually do it to all students here. Um, I've got categories turned on in the gradebook, which means I can I can attach work into a specific category. So for this might be classwork, for example, uh, and I've actually weighted those categories. So classwork is worth 50% of the grade, as opposed to say homework, which might be only worth 10% of the grade. Uh, and that the classroom will look after all that weighting for me as well as it exports into the gradebook. Um, I can allocate a number of points to a task. So this might be worth say 20 points. And you can change the number of points. Or, or you can make it ungraded if it's not a graded task. Uh, due dates, as you may know, you can just add a due date like that. The neat thing about adding a due date is it then drops it into the student's calendar and consequently they will get reminders and notifications about work coming up. Uh, so that's a nice feature. And finally, I can add it to a topic class. Let's just put this in English for now. And down here, these are the these are the things I want to talk about. And although I want to mainly talk to you about originality reports, I will also throw in this thing about rubrics. So we do have a marking rubric system now in Classroom we can use. And I can click on the word rubric there and either create a rubric on the fly, reuse a rubric if it's already been used in a previous classroom, or I can import it from Google Sheets. Uh, and, and for that, I would have previously created it and exported it as a sheet. And now I can import it into this classroom from an external source. I'm just going to reuse a rubric that I've already made. And it's part of this one here. So I'll just so that was a previous task I just pulled it in from. And you can see now that rubric is attached. It's got three criteria. It's worth 12 points. If I open that up, you'll see this is the rubric that I attached there. I've got three criteria, persuasion, originality, spelling, and grammar. And I've got four different categories in each one. Uh, and so that's what the rubric will look like when it goes out to the student. But what we're really here to talk about is this thing, this was check plagiarism, originality report. If I turn this on, it's going to enable an originality check for this task. Now, why is that important? Because there, there are actually two uh, editions of G Suite, if you like. There's the free version of G Suite that most people use. I would say 99% of schools use the free version of G Suite. Um, but we do actually have uh, another version of G Suite, which we call G Suite Enterprise Edition, or G Suite for Education Enterprise Edition. Um, and it uh, is a paid version of G Suite. And we charge on a per head basis for that. Um, and it has a whole bunch of other features around security and privacy. It gives you some extra, a whole lot of extra reporting features. 
Uh, you can integrate with other systems outside in terms of security. I'm sure uh, Rich will talk about this later in his session. Um, it's got a whole bunch of extra meat features and it's got some extra classroom features. That said, the stuff I'm showing you today works fine just in the regular G Suite for Education, the free version. But the limitation is this, you can only have five originality reports per class. So don't burn them on every single assignment, just pick and choose which assignment you want to use them on. It was three until recently, uh, but we've just upped the limit to five. Um, so that's probably a good thing. Um, once you initiate a plagiarism check or an originality report for students, the student can run that originality check for themselves three times. Uh, so, that, so the process would normally be they do the piece of work, they check themselves for originality, they'd probably get flagged with some things typically, uh, and then they would go away and fix that, they'd run the check again, and then when they get their final draft, they'd run a final check and then submit it to the teacher. That's typically how it would work. The teacher on the other end automatically gets an originality report generated for them. Um, they don't have to do anything. If they enable that originality check by ticking this box, they simply have that report delivered to them for every student in the class. Okay, so that's how you enable the originality check. Uh, having set all that up now, I will assign this to my student, students. And so that's gone off there. And you can see now if I go down to the English section here, here's the task I just sent out. Um, it's called Where Do We Live? Let me just get rid of that one. Where Do We Live task. If I open it up, you can see I would normally have written something there, but just doing this on the fly. It's been sent out to six students. It has a marking criteria attached to it. If I open it up and look at that as the teacher, sorry, just see this is what uh, the teacher sees. Here's the grading rubric again. It's attached to that task. Just sort of letting Oliver in. Uh, and so, um, so that's what that task looks like. The other thing the teacher gets on their view in classroom is this view here, where they have the list of students that this has been assigned to. And you can see them over on the side here. And I can also see the status of every student. So right now it's been assigned to six students. None of them have actually submitted or handed it in yet. Okay, let's just switch gears. And I wanna take you over to the student side of things now. So I'm gonna go over here and click this tab. And hopefully you can see that tab there. Let me just make sure I got the right one. Uh, yep. Uh, so what you're looking at here, this is a student work. So this student I'm looking at here, the student's name is Justin, <laughs> Justin Time. Um, and so uh, I'm going to go into Justin's work as a student. Now, this student has already written a piece of work in response to this task. And I'll just show it to you here. So it's a Google Doc. And the student's written a response here that this little essay they've written is called Why Melbourne is the Best City in the World. I think Melbourne, I don't know, I don't know at the moment, Melbourne's a bit of a dodgy place to be at the moment, but um, it is a pretty good city. But uh, you see the student's written a whole bunch of stuff here. I think Melbourne is the best city in the world. It has amazing places, things to do, blah, blah, blah. There's a whole bunch of paragraphs there that this student has written. As a teacher, if I saw this come in as an assignment and I read it and it sounded good, I might not really clearly know if anything in here was plagiarized. Uh, I may have paragraphs that are suspicious, but I may not actually know. And so what this originality report is trying to do is to help both teachers and students identify those sources of plagiarism. The student themselves might not know, by the way. The student may have done research. Obviously, they would have done research in order to write this. It probably all didn't come out of their head. They would have needed to gather facts and information. And then we say to students, put it in your own words. And some students do a great job of putting it in their own words and some don't. And so um, what, uh, you know, as a student now, I'm looking at this and thinking, well, I've done a great job. I've answered the question. I've done some research. But what I may not realize is that I haven't kind of uh, synthesized this into my own words as well as I should have. All right. So as the student then, let me go back over to this tab. As a student, I come in here to my classwork tab. I see that my teacher has left me an assignment here. Where do we live task? And I can tell it's something I haven't done yet because it's it's uh, colored, it's in this blue color. All the ones that are gray are things that I've already dealt with or I don't need to do anything with. So I'll pop in here as a student and view this assignment. Now, as a student, let's get rid of this little notice. As a student, I can see here that uh, here is the rubric that's been attached to this. So I can see I'm being graded on persuasion, originality, and my spelling. 
if I want to know more information, I can fold these little things down and I get the grading system there. So there it is, elementary, developing, substantial, and um, and uh, what's this other one? Advanced. So I know what I'm being graded on. I can see all the criteria for all those tasks right there. So that's helpful. Um, but I'm, I'm, I'm the student. I've now done the work and I now need to hand it in. Now, because the teacher didn't give me anything attached to this, I, it's up to me to create some work and attach it and return it. What I can do up here is in the corner, say add or create, and I go into my Google Drive and I find the piece of work that I've done, which is this one called Why Melbourne is the Best City in the World. I see Kimberly Hall's just joined us. I'm sure she'll agree with that. And, uh, and so there, I've just attached that. Now you notice that when I attach this document, which I'm about to hand in, I now get this button up here that says originality report, run. Text from submissions will be compared to edit existing text on the web. Uh, and so that's what's actually about to happen when I click this run button. In fact, let's just do it. Click that run button. It'll tell me I have three out of three originality reports available. This number is about to be upgraded to five, as I mentioned before. So you're going to get five out of five, not, uh, not three. When I run this, what it's doing is it's taking that student essay that I showed you, and it's essentially Googling the entire essay against the entire web. And so if a student has um, taken things from somewhere, and maybe not being quite so original in terms of um, uh, summarizing them, it should flag it. Now, remember, I'm the student, right? This is self-assessment at this point. So the student now can click on this view originality report link here. So it was done at 12.49 today. Click on that link and it will take them to a new tab. It will put their essay over on the side here. And you notice it's highlighted one, two, three, four, five paragraphs. And if I click on this first paragraph, for example, it will tell me that this is what I wrote. There are a few reasons why Melbourne is considered such a great place to live, blah, blah, blah. And this is the top web match. That exact same wording, that exact same paragraph comes from an article called 10 Awesome Reasons to Live in Melbourne. In fact, there's the link to it right there. If I click on that and go to it, you can see there is the actual article it came from. Sorry, just loading. And if I scroll down a little bit here, it'll actually have a paragraph somewhere here about, uh, I forget where that paragraph came from, but it's somewhere in that article. So what the originality report's just done is it's it said, hey, here's a paragraph of text and the wording matches exactly something on the internet. Here's another one here. This one came from 13 Reasons Why Melbourne is the World, something from the Telegraph in the UK. Here's another paragraph that's coming from a website called situ.com, Why Melbourne is the Best City. Here's another one coming from that same Telegraph article, right? So it's actually identified the three paragraphs, sorry, five paragraphs that have come from ex three different external sources and identify them. Now, as a student, I might be a bit surprised at this point. I might think I've done a really good job of summarizing and I suddenly realize, oh, wow, I haven't done such a good job after all. So what I can do is click on this edit button. It will then open up my Google Doc in editing mode. It puts the passages over on the side here and it tells me it, it's identifying these passages. And if I, so I go back through these lists here, I can actually browse through the identified passages and then my job would be to go and fix it. Now, initially, I wondered why, uh, you know, in this in this particular view, it's not actually highlighting the passengers because it's making me do some work. It's actually already flagged the passengers for me. I can switch back and forth to the report view and back to the edit view. But it's making me as a student do a little bit of work here to sort of say, hmm, you know what, you haven't done such a great job summarizing that. You should probably go and, go and fix that. I think we've taken a little bit of a different approach here to... Um, perhaps some other plagiarism um, uh, solutions in that the goal here is not really to catch students out. It's not simply to sort of, you know, go, aha, I caught you cheating, you know, like that will happen. But the goal is really to give students the tools so they can go in and self-assess and make their own, uh, you know, improve their own uh, writing behaviours by having a tool that lets them identify this sort of thing. So that's how that works. Let's just say the students made some changes here. I, I, I was raised in Melbourne, was raised in Melbourne, right, before I migrated, right, whatever. I'm making some changes to try and improve the work so it's no longer quite so uh, 
obvious that it's um, plagiarized. So I make those changes and, uh, and then what I can do is I can turn this work in by hitting that turn in button. It then takes me to this page, which is going to submit the work for me. And it tells me one uh, the attachment will be submitted. Yes, I want to do that. And I hand that in. So that's now gone through that first iteration of the process where we've given the work to the students, they've run a self-check, they've identified some passages and hopefully made some changes. Right, now let's switch back over to the teacher view again, which is, um, where did I put the teacher view? It is this one here. Okay. So hopefully you're now back seeing uh, my teacher view of the page and you can see that uh, Classroom has identified that Justin has actually turned that piece of work in and you can see it's attached here right now. I'm waiting on the other five students. They haven't done anything yet. But as a teacher, I can go in now and click on Justin's work. And so this is what's called the grading screen in um, Google Classroom. This is where teachers get to grade student work. And I can actually see here, if I click on this little drop down at the top here, so when it finishes loading, there you go. So I can actually see all the other students in the class. I can see one student's turned it in, the others are all assigned. I can use these arrows here on the side here to flip between student work. So when I'm grading, this is a really neat interface for grading student work because I can literally page from one student to the next. So very quickly browse through student work. You notice that the rubrics that I mentioned before are showing up on the side here. So first thing I want to do as a teacher is to just notice, because I put an originality report on this, I've actually got a little link here that says there are five flagged passages. So hmm, that's got my attention. Now, remember, if this were a sort of legitimate real world example, hopefully by now the student would have gone through a number of cycles of looking at their work, making corrections, checking it again, making more corrections and so on. By the time it eventually gets to a teacher, I would hope that I'm not seeing any flag passages or at least very minimal flag passages. Um, the the, the uh, originality reports can also differentiate the difference between uh, uh, a plagiarized passage and a cited passage. Uh, and simply by a cited passage, it has quote marks around it. So it will by default ignore cited passages because if it's in quote marks, obviously it's, it's taking the text from somewhere else. Um, but you can actually flag cited versus uncited passages as well. As the teacher, I'm looking at this and going, there are five flag passages in this student's work. If I click on that and open it up, it opens for me the originality report that the student, same the same report that the student ran. Uh, and I'm seeing the most recent version of it. So if the student ran it more than one time, uh, I'd see the most recent version of that. And I can also see the web matches down here. I can see what percentage of the work. So this is 49% flagged content. So nearly half of the work this student's done has been lifted from somewhere else without change. Uh, so obviously not a good thing. So um, let's close that up. That gives me an insight as a teacher into what's going on in terms of you know, the student's work. I may choose at this point to submit it back to the student and say, you need to do more work on this. Or, you know, I may choose to penalize the student and say, you know, you had the chance, you, you, <laughs> you had the option to check it for yourself and you clearly didn't. So, you know, now you have to wear the consequences. Whatever the, uh, whatever the strategy is you want to implement there is up to you. But um, if I go back to the student's work, now I'm in a position to grade it. So that's how the originality thing works. It literally takes the student's work, Googles it against the entire internet. I mentioned before there are two versions of uh, G Suite, the, the free version that most people use and also the enterprise version, which uh, more and more schools are becoming interested in for the additional features. Um, not only with originality reports do you get unlimited use of originality reports in the enterprise version, but you also there's a coming feature where you can have your own corpus. So you'll actually have um, a space on in your Google Drive where you can collect documents uh, and have the originality report run not just against the entire internet, but also against the corpus of um, documents on your in your Google Drive. And what that means is that if you have uh, an assignment that you give to Year 10 this year, right, what you can do is you can keep copies of all of those assignments, so that when you do the same assignment next year to the to the group 10 a uh, group of Year 10 students. Like if they've got an older brother or something, they can't just simply say, hey, can I have your assignment from last year? I'm just going to submit that because the originality check will actually check against previous year's work. 
So that's a feature that's coming. Um, I don't have a date on that, uh, but it is, I believe, has been announced and it's coming shortly. Um, Steve or Kimberly may know a date on that. Uh, but um, yeah, so that's an internal corpus check um, as opposed to just the external internet as well. I'm just going to pause for a second. I've done a lot of talking and uh, just see if anyone has any questions. Feel free to unmute. We're a fairly small group. So um, there is, if you wiggle your mouse on the screen and you can unmute your microphone at the bottom if you have any questions. So I'll just pause for a second. All right, no questions. And I believe this session is ending at uh, one. So um, we're about a minute out. I will actually ask if you guys don't mind, uh, go back to this tab. Um, I will, I will sh I'll put some links together here. Obviously it's in a slide, so it's not terribly helpful for you, but um, if uh, I, I will drop these links into the, um, the Hoover app later on. So you've got some links to some of these additional resources. But if you guys could do me a big favor, if you could just pop open another tab and uh, just go to that address there, bit.ly slash Google Mighty. Um, it's just a feedback form. Um, we'd really appreciate any feedback you've got on any of these sessions today. Um, and it should only take you a minute or so to do that if you if you would be so kind.